Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be doing, by the title of this video, it's basically all of my favorites. The things that I've been loving. And I decided to do favorites videos not every single month because I feel like that's just not enough time for me to try out different products and just really get a feel for new things that I'm liking. So I've broken it down to where there'll probably be like four favorites videos a year. So every three months I'll do my favorites. I don't know exactly how I'm going to title each of those. I've been brainstorming, but we'll see what it turns out to be. But here we are today doing our first favorites video of the year. So for January, February, and March. I have quite a bit of products, hopefully not too much. Majority of it's makeup, of course. And then I have some things that aren't so much makeup. Well, they're not makeup at all. We will probably discuss those first and then get into the makeup. So I will have the timestamp here as to when the makeup starts. That way, if you're just here for the makeup portion of it all, you can definitely go straight to that timestamp and check out the makeup favorites. Before we get started, I do want to say make sure you subscribe to my channel if you're not already, bell notification on so you can be notified every time I upload. And definitely make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you do like it, please guys. It really helps me out as well as helps you out. That way I know you guys are enjoying the content that I'm putting out and I can continue doing so. So. So the first set of things that I want to discuss today are basically, um, how would you say it? Like, not it's not for everybody because not everybody believes in God, but I definitely do. And I feel like Joyce Myers and Joel Osteen are two of my very favorite uh, preachers or pastors, whatever you want to look at them as. But they're very, very good with explaining the bible and just everyday life and situations so the first thing i want to recommend is podcasts which i have shown on my what's on my iphone video i did show you guys that you can go on to podcasts on your iphone if you have one and they have free podcasts that you can listen to every day now i mostly listen to joel because i feel like he gives a, an explanation that's a little bit more easier for me to understand versus joyce um, hers is a little bit more biblical, but they're still two very good people to listen to. So if you're interested in anything like that, definitely look into that. Also, with that being said, I have two different books here that I've been loving. The first one is this Joyce Meyer's The Confident Woman devotional book. So it's just a 365 day book where each and every day you just have something to read. It just basically has like a title a verse and then kind of like her interpretation of that verse that she wrote about and then a small prayer at the end i really think this is a good way if you're like having trouble um connecting with god or figuring out a way to like pray every day or just study the bible in general this is kind of good um to do just to start off also um i have this breakout journal it's a guide to go beyond your barriers and live an extraordinary life. Joel always talks about living an extraordinary life and, you know, things of that nature. So this is his book. This is actually kind of like a workshop, so to speak, I guess you can say. So you just read. It has, I think, 25 chapters or so. I'm only on the second chapter. I just started this. But it has been um, really detrimental in this Lent process that I'm going through. So since Lent is more than 25 days, I decided not to do this 25 days straight, but I am going to make sure I finish the 25 days before Lent is over. But it has scripture that you read, things that you reflect on, you can write in the journal. Um, it has pages for you to write in there, which I have done. You know, I won't, you know, like show you guys what I've written, but it just like has something here. Asks you, you know, based off of what he's talking about, you know, what you think, you write down. And it basically, you can just reflect back and look at it. So I've really been loving this, but I definitely have really been loving this. These, like I said, both of these people I listen to on podcasts and they're really good. So, so now we're going to go into hair products. For my hair, first of all, um, it is bleached, 
so the blonde was bleached that's how it became blonde i am naturally uh, a dark haired girl when i had my dark hair i finally feel like i had came up with the perfect regimen to my curls now i don't really enjoy wearing my hair curly i mean i like it but i feel like it's like a lot of maintenance and i haven't really uh mastered you know certain products to use for when and things like that like that is just still up in the air for me but i feel like i was starting to master something and then i turned around bleached my hair which i do love the highlights it's definitely uh, grown out a lot since then i didn't know what to do for my blonde hair and the products that worked for my darker hair didn't necessarily work for my lighter hair so i was back kind of like in the same position so I used the Nicole Guerrero limited edition midnight kisses conditioner for my hair because I hate a conditioner that I put on my hair and I don't know it's like stiff I don't like that like I like to put conditioner in my hair and for my hands to just be able to glide through it and my thought process on buying this was not because it was Nicole but because she also has blonde hair so I figured if she made something it would be something that worked for her and honestly i love this stuff and it works really well in my hair and i'm so sad that it's limited edition so i'm definitely gonna have to find a better conditioner but so for now i was gonna say so far but for now uh, this does me very well she also has different ones midnight kisses isn't the only one she also has shampoo and conditioner but i just bought the conditioner because i don't shampoo my hair too too often so this product is the kinky curly not today natural leave-in detangler and i absolutely love this stuff it smells so good and i love to use it post shower to detangle my hair because it just glides on so smooth so effortlessly and it leaves your hair smelling great and my hair is super soft after i use this i can use this by itself like as like a styler or whatever sometimes i just get in the shower wash my hair put this in it detangle it and that's it and i don't put anything else in it and it'll stay nicely for a while or for that day but then the next day it's like my hair is crazy all over again so I don't typically use that by itself. I use it in combination with something else. But I also use the Mix Chicks Leave-In Conditioner, which is this right here. And I do have this bottle to kind of like show you. I feel like sometimes people talk about products and stuff um, as if they love them and really they're just talking about it just to have something to talk about. So I did want to show you that I do have an almost empty one. This one is pretty new, but as you know, as you can see, not as you know, but as you can see, I uh, go through that kind of fast compared to this one. Now this is the leave-in conditioner as well, just like that one, except that one detangles. This one does not detangle your hair, but it definitely smells really good. And I like the way it works with my curls. It doesn't smell as good as the Kinky Curly Not Today, but it still smells good. Now, this um, leave-in conditioner right here is good for all my hair, curly hair queens out there. You know, it doesn't matter your ethnicity, your curl pattern. However, um, one thing that will vary from person to person is whether or not you can use this as your main styler or not. For me, I, can't, I can use it as my main styler, um, but just like the Kinky Curly Not Today, it only lasts 24 hours or that day. So it doesn't really last me, you know, a couple of days at a time, so to speak. So I don't use it as my main styler. I do mix it in with the Shea Moisture, which I absolutely love. And no, it's not in this video because I feel like that's something that you guys probably know. I think I've done a favorites video before. But if I haven't, Shea Moisture, the cream, not the pudding or whatever, custard. Oh, I hate the custard. But the cream, the bomb. That is like my number one styling product. And I typically like to use a uh, leave-in conditioner, an oil, and then a cream. So the Shea Moisture is definitely the cream that I like to use. And then um, this as my leave-in. Or I'll put this as my leave-in with that in combination with each other. But both of those are really good for your hair. So let's get into the makeup. So first and foremost, primer. I only have one Holy Grail primer and it's this Too Faced Hangover RX. It's the best primer I have ever 
come across. And if I may say so myself, I feel like today my makeup has came out probably the best that it's ever come out. Like I just feel like it's just so flawless and, and such an airbrushed finish today. I don't know what it is that I did, whether it's used more of this, because typically I only go in with like a few dots, you know, here and there. But today I really like basically took it as if it was lotion and put it all over my face. And girl, do you see this? If you guys don't know, I have oily to combination skin and I feel like this primer works really, really well with my skin type. So if you have a similar, if not the same skin type as me, this might be what you're looking for. It doesn't feel mattifying to the skin and it's not like super glowy as you can tell. Like the only thing beaming on me right now is my highlight, but it's not mattifying and it's not like over dewy or glowy on your skin so it's just like that perfect barrier between makeup and skin so for lashes i love these tarte tartise pro lashes and goddess i feel like they are very very beautiful um, i love the open eye effect that it gives the lash band is a little on the thicker side versus being really thin but that doesn't really bother me and just as long as you know how to put on lashes you'll be fine i absolutely love these lashes and i can't get enough of them that i even got three packs of these lashes now i do know that these were originally packaged in like a gold and black packaging which is what i originally had when i first ever bought them but then when i went back for them to get three more because my other ones were thrown away by my bestie um the packaging had changed i mean i don't really care about the packaging it's not like i'm wearing the packaging on my eye or anything but it is still very cute packaging these are multi-length fibers on these lashes and they have like that long short long short effect that i talked about in a previous video before so that's what creates like that open eye effect and that way you can have nice lashes but still be able to see the nice eyeshadow look that you have going on on your lids so it doesn't hide it it's not too it's not too much and even though they have a little bit of a thick lash band the lashes are still very sturdy on your eyelash so these next lashes are a new purchase and they took a while to get here i was kind of impatient on how long they took but these are the official mink lashes and i will have some kind of link for them down below in the description box but i was on instagram one day and i don't know when i started following this brand or how that happened but i'm glad that i did but these are in the style dreamer and these are what i had on in a previous video i can't remember off the top of my head what video that was but i'll have the video linked down below for you guys these lashes are very bold very dramatic but still very glam and i just really really love them they're just very big and but very me i just really really love these lashes if i could find someone to do individual lashes the way that these lashes look on my eyes i would be totally satisfied for foundation i stick to my claim of this foundation this thing right here is the best drugstore full coverage foundation i have yet to come across even with these new launches now this is still my number one this is just so phenomenal it dries down so beautifully and it dries down to a matte finish but it's not like super matte to where it like feels uncomfortable on your face i think that the l'oreal pro matte foundation is way more matte than this one it has a lightweight finish and i am just really obsessed with this like i just can't get over how stunning this foundation is now i know there's mixed reviews out there but i feel like majority of the people love this foundation and like i said in my last video when i reviewed it the first time you know rihanna really set the standard in the bar for foundations these days and this is definitely in the running i love the fact that i can put this foundation on and not have to worry about it caking up or flaking or moving around on my face no matter how oily i get my oils might seep through you know by end of day but the foundation still stays in place and that's what i love most about it so i won't talk too much about this foundation but if you do want to check the original review that i did plus demo um, here on my channel i'll definitely have the video linked in the description box for you so you can watch it right after this one okay so the dior forever foundation this foundation 
is um, definitely a newer purchase for me. It's supposed to be full coverage. I would just say that it's a buildable full coverage to be on the safe side. Now I do love this foundation, maybe not as much as the NYX to be quite honest, but I do love it. Um, I did a first impressions on this, so if you wanna check that out, that will also be linked down below. But as far as like my final thoughts and everything, the reason why I'm including it into this video is because it is a favorite of mine. This foundation looks beautiful on the skin. It's supposed to be matte, but I feel like it gives me a semi-matte finish and it's a very lightweight. And it almost feels like I don't have makeup on, which is what the NYX does for me. So this has definitely been a really good uh, product to use. Now, unlike the NYX foundation, I do feel like this kind of gives me a little bit more of a glow versus the NYX being a little bit more mattifying to the skin or to the appearance of the skin. Um, this foundation I would typically wear for like small or short events where I don't have to have it on all day long because my oils do seep through and I'm not really one for touching up my makeup. So if I can avoid that at all cost, I definitely will. So for concealer, I have the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Concealer and this is in the shade 350. Now this concealer does not budge. Although my oils start to seep through, the concealer doesn't move at all. And I really, really love that about this concealer. It gives a flawless coverage to your face. And in my opinion, it is a medium to full coverage concealer, not as full coverage as Tarte Shape Tape, but not as not full coverage as the Makeup Revolution. Now, let me just say this. The Makeup Revolution concealer, I do have it. I have tried it and I just can't seem to love it. I know this is a favorites video, but I just figured I'd say that because I just compared this in comparison to those two, but I just can't love it. But this is definitely a really good concealer. The one flaw I have about the concealer is just that it dries fast, kind of like the foundation. So you kind of got to work with it pretty quickly. So. A tip I could give just like I gave last time is just to apply it in the area that you want to conceal one spot at a time and then blend it in like apply it blend it in apply it blend it in so on and so forth um, that way you just get a more flawless finish versus letting it get dry and tacky unless you like your concealer to get a little tacky then it'll definitely work great for you that way but I don't really like my concealer to be too tacky when I'm trying to blend it out, so I much rather just do one section at a time. There have been times where I'm either in a rush or sometimes I forget that it does that and I just apply everything everywhere and then I just work with it as is. But again, it does dry down pretty fast, but it's not a deal breaker for me. So Wet n Wild has come out with quite a bit of new things. I'm not sure if this is like one of the new things though. Um, this is their contour stick and this is in Call Me Maple. Um, they have a different shade, that one shade that's a little darker than this that I think everybody else loves. But I went for this one because I feel like it's just better for my skin tone. It's what I have on today as a contour and I really love this stick. It blends out super easy, whether that be with a damp beauty sponge or a brush. Today, I happen to use all brushes. I did not use not one sponge on my face today and it worked out very, very well. So I love that about it. I do recommend that you set this um, contour cream with a powder uh, because it is super blendable and it moves around pretty easily when you blend it out. Um, I haven't really tried not setting it, but I do recommend you set it because of those things. Um, that way it just doesn't move or budge throughout the day. So whether you're setting it with a contour powder or a bronzer, it doesn't really matter. For me, I set with the bronzer, but this is a really, really good and affordable contour shade. This spray is definitely an oldie but a goodie. Uh, they definitely repackaged their spray bottles. They now they have like fix written in cursive or something like that on the bottle. So this is definitely an old bottle, but I still have it. I do use it quite often. Um, I love using this. This is, like I said, an oldie but a goodie, and it's basically become my holy grail. You can use this as a primer. You can use it after your makeup to set your makeup. This has so many uses. It's like a multi-use spray. It's been around for a while, 
a long while and there's a reason because it is just that darn good but i don't typically care to use it as a primer or a setting spray or anything in between i do use it for those things but that's not mainly what i keep it around for i like to use it for my shimmer shades something about the way this spray is formulated that when you spray that on your brush and you pick up any shimmer shade and it just gives it that wet metal look oh it's just so beautiful um even with highlighters if you have a highlighter that's just not super super you know glowy and you want it to be a little bit more glowy than what it is definitely try spraying some mac fix plus spray either on your face on your brush something and then applying that and it will help i've tried other sprays to see if they work well with you know um making shimmer shades more bold but nothing truly compares to that mac fix plus spray so for my next product it's this derma blend professionals illuminating banana powder now this banana powder is supposed to be a mattifying powder, um, which is good, but I love to use it under my under eye because it lightens it up a little bit and I definitely used it today, but I would not recommend setting with this powder because it is mattifying. If you let it sit under your eye or anywhere on your face for way too long, it's going to get super dry and it's going to look powdery in a sense. So in order to avoid that, you just simply put it on underneath your eye and you wipe it right off so you're just like setting it into your skin and then wiping off the remaining you do not want to let that uh, bake underneath your eyes because it will look super dry and probably feel dry i do find that the product doesn't have any flashback when taking flash photography i mean i don't take too much flash photography but when i do i don't notice any i've been trying not to use the powder anywhere else other than under my eyes now i'm starting to use a different powder to carve out my cheekbone versus what i use under my eye uh, versus what i use to set all of my face because i feel like when you do that it creates dimension to your face and your face appears a little bit more flawless which may be why my face and my skin looks really good today because i use several different powders but nonetheless love this powder and i will continue using it if you're an og to my channel then you know how much i raved about the makeup revolution bronzer and how it was just so glowy and just how i loved it so much and how i didn't want to you know use any other bronzer and that was like my go-to bronzer and all that jazz not anymore so i have two bronzers the first one is this chocolate soleil well chocolate gold soleil bronzer by Too faced and it's this right here first of all it smells just like chocolate it smells really good like any Too faced products they really be coming out with those scents that just smell so chocolatey and so delicious but this bronzer right here adds such a beautiful bronze to the skin. Um, no shimmers or glitters transfer onto my skin as far as I can tell. Um, I don't really notice any like real big chunks of glitter or anything like that. Now when you're looking in the pan, they do have some kind of glitter reflex. I don't think you guys can see it. But look at this in the store if you don't have it. And you'll see that it kind of has like a little bit of real real like sheer shimmer in it but to me it doesn't really come off that way on the cheek and i like that but it's not matte um i think they do have a matte version of this bronzer if i'm not mistaking so if that's something that you like you can definitely go for that this bronzer is a medium brown with a warm yellow undertone um with a golden sheen to it if i had to explain it that's what I would say. But it is very, very beautiful. As you can see, I definitely used it to bronze my face today. Unlike the Chocolate Gold Soleil bronzer, this pretty vulgar bronzed B uh, bronzer is an all matte bronzer. And I really love this bronzer right here. Let me tell you. I didn't think that I would like such a matte bronzer, but this, ever since I got it in a BoxyCharm box, girl i love that bronzer not for like an everyday but when i want more of like a semi-natural finish to my makeup or my skin i definitely go for that bronzer because it gives me that it blends effortlessly and like i said it gives a semi-natural radiant look to your skin so you look really healthy really done up but not 
super glam, you know, not all that shimmer and glitter and shine. It's very subtle. So of. moving on to palettes and things like that. I have this Morphe 35G Bronze Goals palette. How could this not be in my favorites video? Like, come on. As I've said before, this palette shade range is very very beautiful and as like i said before if i had to create a palette that represented me this would definitely be it i have been using this palette every day since i got it and even created today's look with this palette i tried to use a few different shades than i did previous um i'm just trying to test out each and every shade in this palette but so far so freaking good and I absolutely love it. I am just like so obsessed right now with this palette. So a lot of great things to come with this, but it's definitely affordable and you have so many shades to choose from. And like I said, my go-to palette. So before the Morphe palette came about, I got this Ace Beauty Grandiose palette in the mail from BoxyCharm and I was obsessed with all of these shades right in here. Probably everything except for this one right here, this light peach looking one called Clove. But everything else was definitely what I was creating my eyeshadow looks with when I didn't really know what to do with my eyes or anything like that. But this palette is just so freaking pigmented. The shades are so pigmented, especially this poppy shade down here. Oh my gosh, super pigmented but very blendable, very easy to work with, and such a good small palette just to take with me on the go if I just needed to grab one palette and go to have for wherever I was going, this would definitely be a go-to palette to bring because it's small, it's convenient, and it definitely has shades that I know I can work with. So for this next palette, I'm late to the game on a lot of things, I know, but I haven't had it that long, but first of all, can we talk about this packaging? So like, ugh, it just makes me want to travel the world just looking at this. But this is the Urban Decay Born to Run palette. And at first glance, you know, you look at the palette and you're like, oh, that's nothing special. But honestly, when you get this palette in your hands and you start working with it and start creating looks, you find that you can just create just about anything with this eyeshadow range that it has going on. I love the mix of satin shimmer and matte shades. It doesn't have any like really uh, glittery shimmer shades or anything like that. Not too harsh of a glitter going on with the shimmer shades but still a very good range of shades. The shadows mix and blend beautifully with one another so there's not one shade that I find doesn't mix well with the other. Um, it's just a really well-built palette and I love how flexible this palette is. It is a little on the heavier side. It has this big beautiful mirror on it which I definitely love and can appreciate for traveling but this is definitely a travel kind of eyeshadow palette because it just has such a wide range even more so than the Grandiose palette. It has such a wide range of shadows and colors so it doesn't matter what look what style that you got going on that day you can definitely create something with this palette beautiful enough to complement your look with this next palette let me just say that if it wasn't for my video that i did um it was called full face of nothing new if it wasn't for that video i definitely would not have put this palette in this video but because of that video, it definitely allowed me to go back, search deep in my drawers and find things that I used to love and fall in love with them all over again. So we have, of course, this Carly Bible palette by BH Cosmetics. Now she did come out with a deluxe version to this, which I did buy, but I ended up giving away to my younger sister um, because I just felt like they were like super similar and there wasn't really anything different about that palette. And I definitely didn't need to. Um, now the eyeshadow shades on this palette, I am not a big fan of. I don't really care for these. I don't feel like they're super pigmented. Blending abilities, I can't really remember, so I won't speak on that. But let's just leave it at, I'm not crazy about the eyeshadow in this palette. However, what I am crazy about is these highlights. Ooh, I almost dropped it. These highlights up here. These are down here, I should say. These ones right here these are just so beautiful i mean look at my highlight now 
you can't tell me that I'm not glowing. And it's this. I mean, I used all three once again. And I just really, really love these eyeshadow shades. They're super impressive. Unsure why I stopped using them. Maybe it's because I was just so busy trying to test out everything else that was coming out. So focused on buying the next new thing that I didn't really take time to appreciate what I already had. But girl, look at that. So I'm definitely using these shot, uh, highlighters, not eyeshadows. Definitely using these highlighters a whole lot more often now. And it's kind of become kind of like my everyday highlight. Whew, girl, I feel like I have a lot of products. But luckily, we're almost done. For blush, I have this Anastasia Beverly Hills Blush Trio in Peachy Love. And I have really been expanding my blush collection. And I'm really happy about that. I'm glad that I'm expanding myself and trying new things. Like, it just makes me feel so good. But I really love these two shades right here. Peachy, no, I wanted to say Peachy Love. It's actually called Miami and Nectarine, which are these right here. I haven't really too much tried this middle shade, and I will, but I use both of these in combination together today on my cheeks, and I just really, really love this blush palette and the shades and how they blend, and they're not, like, super pigmented, so the orange isn't, like, super orange. It actually blends out really nicely to, like, I don't know, kind of like a light orange in a sense, and it complements my signature look for sure um but i really do love those shadows so if you guys have any recommendations as far as like blushes definitely leave them down below because i can use some more blushes i'm really trying to expand on my blush collection because i've only had a minimal collection and by minimal i mean one blush and that was the purple one um, with a little bit of pink from NYX, which I still love that blush, but like I said, I want to expand myself. So help me out, leave comments, let me know what I should get, and I'll see what I can find. So for liners and brows, we're just going to put those two together. I have the Makeup Revolution. It's like a felt tip liner for your eyeliner. I've tried the e.l.f., didn't like it. Um, I tried another one. I can't remember what it was, but I didn't like that one either. This is the only one that I've purchased so far that I've absolutely loved. And I use this all the time to do my wing liner. It doesn't matter. This is just like my go-to. Um, I do want to try the Better Than Sex one that they just launched. But for a drugstore, affordable price, I think it's like only $7 for this liner. It's really, really good. And I love the felt tip. I love how thin it is. It gets really precise. It doesn't move around. And you can just take your time with it. It's really, really nice liner. And if you mess up a little bit, like on your outer edge or whatever, you just take a makeup wipe, clean it up, and you're good to go. For the brows, I was in Sally's one day. And I was looking in the makeup section. And I saw this. This is by Ardell which the Ardell Wispies are a real popular lash, but this is actually a stroke a brow feather pen. And this is a love hate because when I first used it, I was in love with it. But the only thing is, is that I feel like it not necessarily dries out like super dry, hard, can't use ever again, but the pigment of the stroke of the pen isn't as strong anymore like after the first use and that's kind of like what sucks about it so I like try to shake it and use it just for like the front part of my brow hairs um every now and then but it was it is a good pen but if only it would just last longer that would be great I think there have been other brands that have come out with similar things I'm not saying this is the first brand to launch this but this is this was my first time seeing anything like this and I've looked into it since then and i know there are other drugstore brands that have similar pens that i do want to pick up and try and see if they last longer as far as the pigmentation but the concept of this is just like genius to me really like it and it's easy to create those fake brow hairs and fill in sparse areas and it's just an awesome concept now for the final products lip products i don't have any lip liners that i've selected for this video I do want to grow my collection on that as well. I do have quite a bit, a few, but I don't really use lip liners to be honest. I mean, sometimes and definitely for videos, I try to use lip liners. Sometimes I just don't and I just go straight to lipstick or 
lip gloss or something but as far as lip products go you guys should already know what these are but this is the maybelline nude embrace in 650 and it is just like the perfect nude which is what i have on my lips today and i really really love this lipstick like i'm just so obsessed with it and then i also have this l'oreal nude ballet 601 um, and this is more of like a lipstick liquid lipstick i was gonna say lip gloss but it's more like a liquid lipstick and it just goes on smooth beautifully it's not like super sticky or anything like that and i love the brush which is kind of looks like a little doe foot applicator but it's more of like a pointed shape and it you can just really like shape your lips with this and i just love this shade and i don't think i have to talk much about them because i use them pretty much all the time and you guys are probably tired of seeing them but i'm going to try and expand myself and use different things because i know you guys don't always want to see the same things over and over again but sometimes i just gotta work with what i got and use what i love so hope you guys can appreciate that okay so with all of that that brings us to the end of this video I really hope you guys enjoyed it um, watching me tell you about each and every one of my favorite products like I said in the beginning I believe I said in the beginning that I don't do favorites videos every single month but I definitely plan on doing them about every three months or so um, that way I have time to test out new products see what I truly love and like and would truly recommend to you guys I hope you guys enjoyed this video Make sure you give it a thumbs up before you go. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, bell notification on as always. And definitely follow me on all my socials, which will be linked down below in the description box as well. This has been one heck of a video. It's been pretty long. I've been talking for a while now and I feel like I'm starting to get my words mixed up. But I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you all in the next video or vlog, whichever one comes first. But until next time, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye, guys. Yeah.